Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching The Breakfast Show live on Nile TV International. It's now time for our first talk of, topic of discussion for today. And we're going to be shedding the light on last night's uh, victory of Egypt over Senegal in the first leg of the African qualifiers to the World Cup 2022, which will be held in November later this year in Qatar. And the next leg is scheduled for the 29th of March in Senegal at 7 p.m. And to shed more light on this topic, we're most delighted to be joined over the phone by Mr. Hatem Meher, sports critic and analyst. A very good morning, Mr. Hatem, and thank you so much for joining us on The Breakfast Show. Hello, good morning. Uh, Mr. Hatem, first of all, if you can tell us uh, your thoughts and insights about uh, last night's match and uh, the national team's performance against uh, Senegal. Uh, it, was, it was very tense, uh, very hard. Uh, this game, naturally, uh, as, as people expected, uh, it, it was very difficult. Uh, uh, I believe that... Uh, Kirish uh, did the right thing and uh, applied the right strategy uh, to, to contain uh, 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 the, the pressure and attacks of Senegal because uh, they, have, they have great quality in the squad. Uh, they, have, they have many players who can make all the difference. Uh, so if you leave any gaps, uh, you would be punished. Uh, so I, I, uh, I know some people were not very happy because... Uh, Egypt were uh, uh, mainly on the back foot uh, throughout the game, uh, but thankfully uh, we managed to score an early goal that helped us to uh, to adopt that cautious strategy. Uh, I believe in in, in such circumstances uh, the the one the zero win uh, is a very good result. Uh, we are expected to uh, de deploy a similar strategy in the second leg. Uh, but I believe we should keep more hold of the position if, you are, uh, if we are to, uh, uh, to maintain our, our advantage uh, because we can't afford to be under intense pressure for 90 minutes in, in Dakar in Senegal. Uh, so we need just to alter some of our tactics and keep more hold of the, uh, uh, keep more hold of the ball. And uh, it, it will be crucial to try and uh, launch counter-attacks because... If we, if we score an away goal, it would be almost over uh, in our favor. So I think this is very important because if we score an away goal, Senegal would need to, uh, to score three goals to advance, and it would be very difficult for them. So we have a very good chance. Uh, uh, it's great that we did not concede yesterday uh, a home goal. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hatem, uh, also uh, w your thoughts about the presence of uh, more than 60,000 spectators and fans in the Cairo Stadium roaring and uh, cheering for their national team. Uh, do you think that this had a positive impact on the performance of the national team? Uh, definitely. Uh, the, the presence of fans always make, always make a difference. And... and we have we have a great history at Cairo Stadium, specifically at Cairo Stadium. Uh, it's it's an intimidating uh, venue for for our opponents. Uh, that's why the presence of fans is always very important. Uh, uh, I hope I hope this will open uh, the door uh, to to the lifting of the the crowd ban in, in even in domestic competitions. We need the fans back. Uh, all our neighboring countries already have. Uh, already allow fans in the stands even in domestic competitions. So I think we should follow suit because, as we see, uh, uh, it, it has a big, a very big role to play. Mr. Hatem, uh, no one can deny that the Senegalese uh, squad is a strong one. So uh, as an expert and a sports critic, uh, in your opinion, uh, what would you think would be the best formation or strategy tactic that we could deal with them in the upcoming match, especially that it's an away match and it's going to be held in Senegal? Uh, uh, like I said, I, I, I believe uh, Kirish must stick uh, to his uh, to his conservative uh, strategy and the four three three formation that he usually uh, that he usually uh, deploys, uh, but the only difference is that we should uh, and we have to uh, get more position uh, and try to, uh, to to launch some counter attacks because yesterday we couldn't do that 
But but thankfully yesterday we scored an early goal. But that might not be the case in the second leg. We need to try and uh, get more position of the ball because we can't afford to, to, to be on the back foot for 90 minutes because in, in the away game and in the presence of of the, the, the Senegal fans and uh, and given the quality they have in the squad, uh, it, it's, it's very hard to survive the barrage of attacks that we are expected to receive for, for whole 90 minutes. Uh, the only solution for that is that we should try and score an away goal. Uh, 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 we, sh- we should not abandon our caution strategy because if, if, we, if we leave any gaps for Senegal, they will, they will exploit it and, and score. But at the same time, we also cannot afford to defend with 10 men behind the ball. We have to, uh, to find a sort of balance uh, that would be very helpful uh, when we play the away leg. Uh, also, Mr. Hatem, uh, despite the victory, uh, some Egyptians were disappointed by uh, the performance of the national team, especially in the towards the second half, and that the position, the ball position, w- was in uh, favor of uh, Senegal. Uh, why do you think this was uh, happening, and uh, um, was there a, a mistake uh, when it comes to the formation or the performance of? Of the players, uh, if you can please elaborate on that. Uh, Egyptians normally uh, love to see uh, an attacking uh, brand of football. Uh, the, uh, they love to see Egypt, uh, uh, Egypt attacks and uh, uh, play a, a pretty brand of attacking football. But I believe we should be more realistic because the way we played under Hassan Shata uh, 15 years ago is no longer suitable because uh, uh, the generation Hassan Shata had at his disposal was, was, was uh, much more powerful, uh, much more skillful. Uh, so I think now we have to be realistic because our squad is not that, in my opinion, is not that great. Apart from, apart from Hamad Salah, who is one of the best players in the world, uh, we have uh, some good players, but not at the level of Senegal, for example. And this, uh, this is what Kirsch uh, tried to highlight yesterday during the news conference when some reporters uh, appeared to criticize his game plan. He said simply that uh, you are disregarding the strength of, of Senegal. And this is, this, is the main, this is the main point. We are playing uh, uh, a team that its squad includes uh, players in Paris Saint-Germain, in, uh, in in Napoli, in the English Premier League. So it's not it's not that easy to attack. Uh, I, I believe he did the right thing because otherwise, if we if we attack and try to to to, to please the fans and uh, and play the way they expect us to do, we could have conceded a, a goal or more. So that that would have been catastrophic. Uh, so. Uh, Maybe because the, 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 the fans now have some memories of Hector Cooper's uh, defensive strategy that Kirish is, uh, uh, that Kirish is trying to, uh, to, to adopt again. But we, sh- we, should, we should be realistic. I, I believe this is, this is the best way uh, to manage uh, the, the, the current squad. Otherwise, we could, we could receive uh, Many goals like what happened before against Ghana, if we remember the, the 6-1 defeat we, we had in, in Comerci, that was mainly because we played an open game that was not suitable for the team at the time, especially when, when you are playing against uh, a team that uh, includes many, many attacking talents. Mr. Hatem, how did you see the refereeing uh, last night? Uh, I think he was good. There was nothing, nothing controversial. Uh, the decisions were, were easy to uh, uh, to take. Maybe, may, maybe we can have some reservations about some fouls that were awarded to Senegal and not, and some fouls that we sh- we should uh, have deserved. And the, I think the only controversy was uh, uh, a red card that he was going to show to uh, to, to, to a Senegalese player. And he apparently, when he realized that it would have been a second yellow card and the red card, he changed his mind. Uh, 
I think that was obvious on on, on television. But otherwise, uh, uh, I think he was he was good. Uh, and even the the VAR did uh, did not have uh, any uh, controversial incident to review. So I think it was it was easy for the referee. And as long as uh, there was nothing uh, uh, nothing to no decision uh, that would have affected the outcome of the game, I think it's fine. Uh, Mr. Hatem, who do you think was uh, last night's man of the match? Uh, f for me, for me, man of the match uh, uh, was Salah. He was he was great. Uh, Salah is always great, but yesterday specifically, uh, he carried out defensive duties, uh, and that was very important. He he dropped back, he dropped deep uh, on many occasions in the game to help. Uh, Egypt tried back uh, Omar Gabel, Omar uh, Omar Gaber, uh, to help Omar Gaber in in uh, in trying to contain the wave uh, of attacks uh, uh, led by Sadio Mane and his and his teammates. Uh, so his his contribution was crucial, and he and he 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 only, he was the main architect of the of the opener. Uh, it was an own goal, but he did uh, he did everything. Uh, so I believe he was he was Egypt's best player. He was the best player on the pitch, even uh, 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 even among the the, the both teams. Uh, for Senegal, I think also Sadio Mane was very good. Uh, he wasted a, a, a good chance in the first half, and he was a constant threat throughout because of his uh, silky moves and his his uh, his great ability to penetrate the defense. It was very hard to close him down. Uh, but overall, I think Salah did well. Indeed. Um, also, uh, Mr. Hatem, allow me to ask you, uh, who do you think can replace uh, El Winch and Abdel Uh That would be a, a big problem, honestly, for uh, uh, for for Kirsch because to lose uh, three of of your regular defenders uh, before the away leg that. That's very hard to take. Uh, we lost before Rahmat Lagazi before the game, and we now uh, we now lost the the two other central uh, defenders. Uh, I believe he has li very limited options, but I think the I think Yasser uh, Yasser Brahim's the place is guaranteed because he he came on yesterday as a second half substitute and he did w uh, very well. He did some very timely and great interceptions. Uh, and he seemed confident, uh, even though he does not play, he rarely plays on the international level, but he seemed very confident. So I think his place is guaranteed. Uh, the other central defender uh, uh, would be either uh, Zamalek Mahmoud Ali or uh, Pyramid's defender Ali Gabr, who was, who was called up yesterday to the squad. Uh, Ali Gabr could have, could, slightly, could have a slight advantage because of his, his, his experience. He's very experienced in uh, in high-profile matches. He was uh, he was a regular at the Egyptian national team, and he was one of the main players who helped Egypt reach the 2017 African Nations Cup final. Um, so I think he will have a great advantage uh, advantage to partner Yasser Ibrahim in the heart of Egypt's defense. Uh, also, Mr. Hatem, uh, one last question uh, before I let you go: uh, Your expectations for the upcoming match in the car? Uh, it would be very hard, uh, but I believe if we uh, if we play uh, if we play the same defensive way that we played yesterday, but with some like I said with some slight modifications, uh, I believe we have a very good chance of reaching the the, the World Cup finals. Uh, it, it's all about discipline because let's be honest, there's a there's a kind of a gulf of gap. Uh, in terms of quality between Senegal and Egypt, let's be very honest. But uh, tactically, we can bridge that gap. Uh, if, if we are disciplined, uh, if, we, if we avoid the kind of defensive lapses that usually, that usually cost us, uh, I think we'd be able to get through. Uh, Mr. Hatem Meher, sports critic and analyst, uh, really appreciate your insight and we wish our national team the best of luck in the upcoming match and a victory and a qualification to the World Cup finals. And dear viewers, uh, by this we wrap up our first segment in today's edition of The Breakfast Show. And now we move on to a quick break and then we'll be back to resume the remaining segments of The Breakfast Show live on Mile TV International.